What's going on guys? Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I hope you're excited about this upcoming three-day weekend because I definitely am and that's why right now it's around three o'clock and I just want to knock this video out and get it out for you guys and enjoy the next three days of rest, relaxation, away from the markets because I'm not going to lie, even though the end of this week has been pretty hot for me, it's been a ugly, ugly S&P and NASDAQ future, future action. We've seen about 5, 10, 15 minutes of action to start the day, and the rest of the day has been a shit show, in my opinion. So I'm happy to say that over the last two trading days, we've caught some really, really nice trades on Coinbase and on NVIDIA. And if you ever wanted to get a little bit more insight and understanding of how I use supply and demand levels to make my trades, I think that this video is going to be a good one for you. Coinbase, we shorted off a supply level, a break and retest supply rejection. NVIDIA, we longed off of a demand hold and a daily 20 SMA hold. So you're going to see a short side play on Coinbase, a long side play on NVIDIA, and I'm going to break down how I use these levels and these zones to make my trades and to set up my risk reward. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. After we look at these trades, I'll give you guys another final update on my end of month PL, which has definitely been one of the craziest trading months. So I hope you guys enjoy this recap, the trades. Stay tuned for the end of month PL. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys. So the first trade that we're going to review is Coinbase. And this was a $15,900 trade. This was a 141% ROI. And I'm going to back up every trade. I might as well just start doing this. I'm going to back up every trade here straight from my broker statement. So here is all the trades I've taken this month. And this is the trade we're talking about right here, guys. It's right here. Coinbase. March 28th, 270 put. You can see I had a $16,084 win. I guess after commissions, fees, and all that, Tradezella says 159. But right here on my broker statement, it says $16,084. So that's that. Just wanted to share that with you so that there's no questions. And here is the trade. And today I'm going to explain why did I short right here and why did I take profit right here. You guys can see my executions. We took 20 contracts around 9.33 uh, yesterday morning and then sold some of them at 13, some more at 14, some more at 15, and then a few at 12 as well. Scaling out of that position, making a 141% profit in like a half an hour, which is absolutely crazy. The reaction here on Coinbase was nuts. But now let's go ahead and break down the why. Why did I take this trade? What was the mindset behind the interest in this position. Why was I interested in shorting Coinbase, right? And so this has everything to do with supply and demand levels. Previous areas that the market tried to hold, previous areas that the market tried to reject it. And here it is right here. You can see right here, we had a previous rejection on Coinbase, right? The price of Coinbase could not get above that level. So we had Coinbase come up to 276 and Coinbase fell to the downside. Now, a few days later, a few weeks later, Coinbase comes back up, right? And it rejects at the exact same level, $276 per share, another rejection. So we know, right? There's no doubt about it. We know that that 276 is a tough level for Coinbase to get above. Now, Monday of this week, Coinbase was able to get above and it held above that level, right? Coinbase, you can see right here on Monday, got above and held above that level. That should mean that Coinbase should continue higher, right? So we tried to see if Coinbase could continue higher and coming into the next day, I was interested to see actually on that Tuesday if Coinbase could hold this level and I, if I could long that stock. That is not what happened. So we can see on Tuesday, if I zoom in, Tuesday, Coinbase actually failed back below that 276 level. It failed back below this supply level, right? That previously rejected very heavily. 276, 276. We tried to hold above. We failed and got back below that level. Now, this is where the trade comes in. Think about this just for a second sort of logically. If there were very heavy sellers stacked up at this 276 level and they are and they see that Coinbase is back below it, it's like a feeding frenzy for short side trades, right? You have a drop back below a heavy level. Think about how hard it's going to be for this stock to get back over it after failing 
and failing to hold above, right? We tried to hold above. If Coinbase wanted to stay strong, it needed to hold above that 276. It needed to turn a previous double top high into a new low. After failing back below, just think about it as a total loss of momentum, right? The buyers tried their best to get it to hold over that 276. They failed. And if we come back into that level, it should be attacked as a short side level again. And this is exactly why I took this trade. So we can see 276, 276. We traded back into that level on Wednesday morning. And if we go to the five-minute chart, actually, we'll go to the two-minute because that's where I traded it. We'll go to the two-minute chart. And when that bell rang on Wednesday, right, we started to see very quickly the rejections that were stepping in. You can see right here on Wednesday, that bell rang. We opened the day right at the open, opening at 276. Right at the opening bell, we were sitting right at that feeding frenzy level. And you can see we had rejection, number one candle rejection, second candle of day rejection, third candle of the day rejection. And after seeing that, that is just way too much for me not to take a shot, right? I know my 276 level is big. I've done my analysis. I'm confident with the trade idea. And when I start seeing those reactions intraday, that's my confirmation to take the trade. That's what we did. We took that trade. And man, did we not need to wait too long for this to just die for us. I can't say that this was much of an intra-trade management position, right? I didn't do anything on the intra-trade, right? I didn't do anything while the trade was open. It was all preparation, right? This trade was 100% preparation, preparing for the trade idea, understanding the trade idea, understanding my levels, and building a game plan. If I didn't have a game plan built here, I wouldn't have seen 276. I wouldn't have been able to catch this move, and I wouldn't have been able to profit on the downside that came in. I knew the game plan. I knew the 276 level. This is that preparation that we always do. We talked about this on the morning live stream. If you come to those morning live streams and if you got in and you stayed comfortable and relaxed and understood that that 276 was going to be a tough level, you were able to profit in this monster move to the downside. That's when we got in. You can see I'll go back to Tradezilla. Our execution, our first one was 933. So it was around that second candle right here where we started to see those rejections and we just scaled out after we get it. We got the win. Those contracts moved like crazy. Um, so if I can, I can actually go to the uh, contracts here. Those contracts went from six dollars to around fifteen dollars in uh, in about ten minutes. So a huge run on those contracts, obviously because of how quickly this thing dropped to the downside. But this trade was pure pre preparation, understanding our levels, knowing that this was a previous rejection point. That if we trade back into it, that is a break and retest rejection. Now, of course, you don't ever try to expect for it to move that quick in your favor. But that's just the reward you get sometimes when you have a proper plan and you have a proper execution. Sometimes you're rewarded with a straight down flush like you saw there on Coinbase. So that was our first trade. That was really nice. Uh, this was straight from the group and straight from the pre-market live stream. If you come to the pre-market live streams for free... This was one of the trades. I hope you guys sort of understand the idea behind this one, right? Supply, tried to hold, could not hold, break, fail, right? Break and retest failure, right there. Previous rejection, back into a rejection. Look for that to fail again. Play the short side, play the short side. Very nice key level and a very nice example of playing a break and retest off a key supply level right there on Coinbase. Now, the next one that we're going to look at today is NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is an example of a demand hold, a strong upside push off a previous demand and using that level to set up a long position. All right, guys. So the next trade that we are reviewing here today is the NVIDIA call from today. You guys can see I got a little bit of long here, averaged into my longs here and scaled out into the push to the upside. You can see this was entry, 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 entry and scale out, scale out, scale out, scale out, and final scale out right here. Why did I long NVIDIA after the pullback? Why did I think NVIDIA would push to the upside? Let's go ahead and break it down. 
I'll go ahead and pop up my uh, my actual broker from today so you can see because this trade's actually from today. And you can see this is my broker today. You can see I'm up about 9,400 on the day. This is the $10,000 trade right there on NVIDIA, the 900 call. Um, and these are all the peppered positions. I had a lot of small little peppered positions and losses today. I was messing around with SMCI with some light size, and I just couldn't quite get it right. But the meat and potatoes of the day, which was our first trade of the day, was the NVIDIA call, and that was right there. And I'm going to go ahead and break that down right now. So why did I look for NVIDIA longs today? Why did I look for us to push to the upside where we did? Let me go ahead and jump into the NVIDIA chart, and we can break that down right now. So over the last few trading days, NVIDIA has been moving to the downside, right? And you guys know if you have been anywhere or has watch, watched any of my uh, videos lately, you know that we have been watching what markets do at this blue line, and that is the daily 20 SMA. You should know by now, if you watch my channel, that this is a level that I watch religiously. I strongly believe that stocks react to these levels, and it really doesn't, I really don't need to uh, influence you of that because you can just look at the charts yourself. So the last time NVIDIA came back to the 20, or the sec two times ago, was back here in February, major bounce off that level. The 20 came back up. You can see right here, tested it again, major bounce off that level. So coming into today, right, logically, what's my mindset? Hey, NVIDIA is at the daily 20 again. Could this result in another upside move? That's, of course, what my mindset was coming into today. So I told the group, hey, let, we have to watch what this NVIDIA does at the daily 20 SMA. Yesterday, right, yesterday, we dropped to that daily 20. Yesterday, on, uh, on Wednesday, we dropped to that daily 20 very aggressively. And look how NVIDIA was able to maintain that level all day. Right, you can see right there that blue line maintained Nvidia's price action the entire morning. So I saw that and I said to the group, let's look to see if there's a little demand hold at that daily 20 today. Let's see if we can hold that previous day low and let's see if there's some type of a trading opportunity off that daily 20 today. So let's go down to the two minute chart and let's break down what happened. So we're going to go into the two minute chart and we're going to watch Nvidia at the open here. So this if you have questions or ever had questions of what does it look like when something starts to hold? What does it look like when a stock starts to prove that it's holding a demand? Let me go ahead and break this down right here in the two-minute chart. So here's the two-minute chart. And this is yesterday's lows around 892. We had a previous day low around $892 per share. And on top of that, we have this blue line that's running across our screen, which is the daily 20 SMA. So we know from experience that one, the daily 20 is a strong level that could hold. And two, we're at previous day lows, which is always a potential level that the market could hold and bounce higher off of. So we saw early morning that washout move. This is a washout. This is meant to scare you. This is not something that is meaningful. Sometimes it is if you get continuation, right? But a drop like that into a demand is not something to panic about, right? This drop, it's still above your demand. It's still above your daily 20, right? You're not panicking because of that drop. Now, if this drop led to a break and hold below these levels, then of course, yes, you're moving lower. But this drop came right into that demand. And that's actually exactly what you want to see. You want to see that quick aggressive drop into those demand levels. You want to start to see, does this area start to maintain, right? Do I start to see a willingness to hold in my daily 20 SMA, in my demand zone, whatever zone that is for you? Now, for me, it was this previous day low, and it was this daily 20 SMA. And what I started to see over four two-minute candles was a wick to the upside, a closing wick to the upside, a green candle wick to the upside, and a green candle and a body closing and opening above that daily 20 SMA. You see how the body of this candle opened and closed above that da daily 20 SMA? After seeing this curl back to the upside off my demand above my daily 20, after seeing this, right, at this point, I know that I could set up my long entry, right? Let's say that the white line is my long entry. I could set up my long entry right here, right? Set up my long. My risk is down below the lows, right? And my reward is up on a demand squeeze back to the upside, right? 
I was I was targeting 925, so I was looking for a lot more than what we got. But of course, I'm always on a zero DTE contract. I'm gonna be a scaler as I get the move, right? But I knew, at least I knew where my risk was. My risk was an entry here, and I knew that my risk was down into the lows, right? But I can take that trade. I can trust that trade because I know that this area down here is not going to just be easy for the stock to fall through. You have to have some confidence and understanding that there is a defense that's showing up at this level. There is someone on your back pushing you along, helping you right in this trade. There are other people, other buyers that are willing to buy NVIDIA's stock at this level. You have to trust that. You have to be able to trust that that demand below and that daily 20 SMA are going to have your back in this situation and you just have to have your risk sort of, you know, aligned and you have to understand what the situation you're in. And so we knew we had that demand. We knew where our risk was and we got that beautiful, beautiful squeeze. And it was such an awesome way to start and pretty much end this week. It was such a quick and aggressive trade. We got up to, we had the contract tech 760. We started scaling in around the fives and we were scaling out around the 13s. This was an over 100% trade in about 10, 15 minutes. What an awesome trade live with the group. If you guys saw this one live, make sure to comment down below. Let me know if you caught this with me, um, but just an awesome one. And you can see here, and this is my uh, broker statement. This was the uh, 900 call, March 28th, 900 call. Let's go ahead and find it, NVIDIA. March 28th, 900 call right here. Here it is. March 28th, 900 call. And that was our trade straight from the broker statement. So that was NVIDIA. Those were the two trades that we ended the week with. You guys can see besides that morning push, man, like I said, this is a disgusting, disgusting price action on NVIDIA and pretty much disgusting price action on the whole market, right? It's just been a really slow and painful week to watch. Look at the NASDAQ within this channel the entirety of today not good not fun not something you want to be a part of but two really nice trades and i hope you understand that supply and demand supply on coin demand on nvidia and how i use those candles to sort of look for that long and look for that demand hold so guys with that said i'm going to do this again we've done this previously but i'm going to do it one more time for you guys this is not going to include today's action but if we go to the first to the 27th we can go ahead and view my uh, my broker statement, I'll go right here to realize and unrealize summary. You can see the $172,000 profit. And we're going to go ahead and add on the uh, the today's realized profits, which I will pull up right here. Today's realized profits, $9,800. Uh, so that's going to be about a $180,000 month for me. And uh, it's been it's been crazy. But I hope that you watching this YouTube channel and learning from some of the trades that I share with you guys, I hope it's helping you. Hope you're finding value. Of course, please don't try to match these numbers. Please understand that I'm trading with very large size, guys. I'm not discounting that, okay? I'm not discounting that I'm trading with large size. I'm trading with twenty, thirty thousand dollar positions. I've gotten to this level, and I'm gonna keep running with it, right? I hope that you can take this as a way to be along the journey with me. Understand where I've come from. If you're a longtime subscriber of this channel, guys, I did not. I was not. Uh, at this level at one point in my career. I started making YouTube videos taking two, $3,000 position sizes. This is not something that I've always done, but I've gotten to this level. You've seen me along the years trading, making these videos, sharing this insight with you. So I hope this is a educational and also an inspirational video for some of you out there. Press that like button. Have a hell of a weekend, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.